But first and foremost, before we go any further, you and I, I want to talk to you about a very important subject, bladder cancer. May has been designated as the first ever Bladder Cancer Canada Month. And Ken Bagshaw of Bladder Cancer Canada is going to be joining me. He is a retired lawyer, integral to the 2010 Olympics. He was a past Board of Governors of the University of British Columbia, a past member of the Board of Governors of the University of British Columbia, and the Vancouver Police Board. He himself was diagnosed with bladder cancer and was so grateful to Bladder Cancer Canada, he wanted to help out in any way he could. So he went straight to the top of the organization. Why not? And he is the newly elected chair of the Board of Directors for Bladder Cancer Canada, and I'm grateful that he is on the line with me right now. Hello, Ken. Hi, Maureen. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, and I appreciate that uh, luxurious in and somewhat over-inflated <laughs> introduction. Not at all. Are you kidding me? All the fabulous work <laughs> you've done. I love people who volunteer straight to the top. <laughs> I actually <laughs> was elected to the um, the as the chair of the Nurse Continence Advisors of British Columbia, the British Columbia chapter, and they said yes. to me, well, you could be the treasurer, and uh, which I'm terrible about money, so that was one thing. But they said, you can be the treasurer, but if you be the president, you actually get your flights paid to all of the annual meetings. And I said, well, why wouldn't I be president? <laughs> so <laughs> it was a... It, choices, aren't they? It, absolutely. It was a rapid rise to the top for me, so I understand what that is. Thanks so much for joining me from Ontario. Uh, for- no trouble at all. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to talk about bladder cancer and Bladder Cancer Canada's work in addressing that, that subject, a little-known subject with most people, and that's why it's so important to get the story out. That's right. And May marks Canada's first Bladder Cancer Canada Awareness Month. And bladder cancer is the fifth most common cancer in Canada, and people rarely think about bladder cancer, cancer yet it is so common, the fourth for men and twelfth for women. And about 8,300 Canadians are diagnosed each year with this cancer. I've been involved with this uh, Bladder Cancer Canada for a number of years at the public forum as well as the the September walk that we have for bladder cancer. So uh, tell me about a little bit about your journey uh, and your diagnosis with bladder cancer. Well, my, <clears throat> my journey has been a relatively benign one, surprisingly enough. And uh, for a great number of people, it isn't like that at all. I was diagnosed in 2012. I got treated very quickly. My tumors were re- disclo- dis- discovered and removed within uh, 10 days. And I've been on a constant watch, as all bladder cancer patients have to be um, since then, and I've had no reoccurrences. So I'm in a remarkably positive position. And nevertheless, um, you know, one of the things about bladder cancer is that it is the most expensive cancer to treat of all of the cancers on a per-patient basis. And that's driven by the fact that bladder cancer has a tendency to very have a very high reoccurrence rate. And to ensure that uh, the risks associated with that potential reoccurrence are properly monitored, bladder cancer patients are under frequent re-examination by, by the urologist to make sure that it doesn't come back. And that's a lifetime watching routine that must be maintained for bladder cancer patients. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason that, it, that that's the situation. The other reason that, that uh, we're uh, working so hard in pursuing our three principal objectives of greater awareness, and that's what you and I are talking about right now, and also patient help and support, and also helping both pay, contribute to and encourage more research. Why more research? Because, well, bladder cancer, as you accurately said, is the fifth most prevalent cancer in Canada. It ranks at the 20th level in terms of research funding. It is seriously underfunded. It is an orphan cancer. It is a relatively unknown cancer. And so we expend a great deal of our energy and our passion and our commitment in trying to make sure that both the public, bladder cancer patients and their caregivers, medical professionals and anyone else who has any reason to be concerned become much more aware about bladder cancer and we elevate its recognition to a point where we get a better balance between the research that's going on and the uh, 
seriousness of it as a disease in our society. Exactly. And I think what is most important is that the hallmark symptom of bladder cancer is blood in the urine or hematuria. And that happens in more than 80% of cases. And that's basically the whole theme of your campaign, See Red, See Your Doctor. Yes, as a matter of fact, that's absolutely right. The blood in the urine can be symptomatic of other things like urinary urinary tract infections. That's right. um, And so on. But as you said, the probability that it is attributable to bladder cancer is very high. And because of that, we actually launched an ongoing campaign for awareness um, better part of two years ago. And you referred to the tagline that we associated with that, that is, see red, see your doctor. And we've used an imagery of, of yellow lemon symbolizing healthy urine and then a red lemon falling into the, into the uh, yellow lemons to indicate the presence of the cancer cells and the disease that needs to be treated. Which is and a great... So what, oh, go ahead. Yeah, so I was only going to say that this, is, this campaign brought us, has been bringing us more accurately from a situation where the awareness level was abysmally low to a point where people are identifying that message, see red, see your doctor. And as a result of the two years we plowed into raising awareness there, and the introduction of the Awareness Month here, as as happens in the U.S. and the U.K., now all three countries have mounted May as a Bladder Cancer Awareness Month. We're finding that the awareness is growing. Um, it's, we still have a long way to go, but the higher we get that, the more responsive people will be when they see red. There's a terrible tendency that people have to slough it off when they see red, they see blood in their urine. They say it's something else. It'll I think go away. people are afraid also to go to the doctor and get the diagnosis, but this is certainly one of you those know. cases where it's better to have a early diagnosis uh, and, and, and early treatment for better outcomes. Yeah. You know, and there are two different streams of bladder cancer, and it's worth just noting that. The greatest percentage of them are described as non-muscle invasive, and, and they tend to be, we, as we describe them, uh, the pussycats of the disease. They are quite well treatable, and the risks associated with mortality flowing from them, the risks of them getting worse and becoming muscle invasive or metastasizing to other organs is relatively low. But the other 20% are muscle invasive, and they have a high rate of, highly aggressive, but a high rate of going on to metastasize. And and the mortality rate is 40% at five years, and that's a very high percentage. And that's the target of a lot of new medications that are coming out, you'll read about in the media, uh, immunotherapies, immuno-oncology to, to, it, to, it, to attack these. And there is some real promise arising out of re- research by some of the big pharmaceutical companies, and we'll be hearing more about that. And we're really quite encouraged because it's the first time in almost three decades that there's been any new treatments for bladder cancer. The fact that it's been had such low visibility in the public eye is, is repeated, unfortunately, in the medical world and the research world and we're driving to change that as well. And, of course, we have the amazing Dr. Peter Black here at VGH who's doing a lot of that uh, bench work. You, you do. Yes, you we're, do. we're very fortunate. Uh, this is a cancer that can strike men and women, and what is the most common risk factor for bladder cancer? Oh, the most common risk factor, surprisingly, I think, to most people, is smoking. You know, there's we've long associated uh, lung cancer with smoking, and that's correct, of course, but it is considered to be um, the cause in probably 8 out of 10 cases. Other causes can be of working in environments where there are um, caustic chemicals or chemicals that can induce it, uh, working in um, paint factories and, and uh, other places where there's uh, um, uh, toxic, toxic chemicals, chemicals being yes, used, being used, but but that is a relative minority for sure. But smoking, as a, as we all know, uh, has had a devastating effect on society for a long time, and bladder cancer is one of the major um, cancers that has um, borne that uh, that burden. 
Exactly. Well, it's a great organization. You're doing tremendous work. It was formed by two bladder cancer survivors, David Gutman and Jack Moon. Uh, you're continuing on their uh, fantastic foundation about this. And uh, I look forward to the walk in September. I'll be asking my listeners to donate to the campaign. <laughs> I've been well, giving them presents for a few years. I think they can <laughs> reciprocate. I think you give them presents every Sunday night. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, just on the walk, let me just jump in on that. Sure. Thank you for the, for the, for the prompt. Um, September 25 in Vancouver, the bladder cancer walk will be going. Um, on our website, uh, people can go to uh, BCC, I mean Bladder Cancer Canada, bccwalk.ca uh, to find it, find the walk, to look for ways to re- register to walk, to raise money, to be a volunteer, to support other teams. Whatever way you can help us, we'll be very grateful. And we're going to be looking, I'm going to be talking later about loneliness and the, the health risks associated with loneliness and why volunteering is a good thing in getting connected with other people. So uh, we'll tie it to the bladder cancer Absolutely. walk. Absolutely. I tie Absolutely. everything to sex. Anyway, Ken, <laughs> <laughs> as you know. No. As I do, yes. Great. <laughs> going to tell them about the womanizer. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the womanizer a bit later. That's right. Yes. Mostly men uh, inquire about the womanizer. I wonder why. Husbands of the year. That's what I say. Anyway, well, thank you so much. Great to talk to you. You, All right. Thank you so much for all you do to help us. Thanks, Maureen. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. So.